Hello and welcome to the place to be reviews. This, ladies and gentlemen, is, of course, you know what it is. It's Batwoman. Season 1, Episode 5, Mine is a Long Sad Tale. I'd like to ask you to please subscribe or consider subscribing to help us grow the channel. Provide you with more content, live streams, things of that nature. But with that being said, let's get right into this review. Now, we start this episode in a morgue and we see someone uh, slicing some skin off multiple cadavers from a certain part of the body which turns out to be the thigh and it turns out to be Alice with all the advanced camera work that we see from Luke Fox and of course our very own uh, Miss Kate Kane and they, you know the the Gotham police cameras can't pick up who this woman is as they have her on camera in this shadowy type you know view <laughs> from the city cameras but then when it comes to the crows cameras the image is automatically just brightened up like <laughs> it's like somebody took a picture and it's like pitch black in a room and then <laughs> they they went in and said hey can you brighten this up and it's like oh yeah hang on let me go back in time turn a light on that's basically what they did here so you know Luke and Kate were reviewing these tapes and they're, they're calling her the skin pirate and they, they find out it's Alice stealing the skin you know it's a way, good, good way to start out and of course of course Kate is going to put a stop to it now Alice has her dear Dodson back <laughs> she's taping him up and this is such a, a perfect scene because it shows how weak and ineffectual the male characters are in this show, really. You know, this guy's supposed to be a badass. Now, granted, he just got off this, you know, injury and all that, but still. Um, she's taping up and she threatens if he revealed their plans off with your head. She says, you know, the lights go out because Kate was going to put a stop to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, she knows how to find Alice because she put a tracker in Dodgson's neck when he was passed out in Mary's clinic. So, her super secret clinic that, you know, goes against everything that you're supposed to do in the medical field. There's a lot of liability there, but that's, you know, because the plot, it's, it's alright. Um, so, the lights go out and Batwoman's there, so... Alice's bunny rabbit gang, you know, the Wonderland gang, they just start shooting recklessly, and the 100-pound vigilante with night vision goggles dispatches them all one by one, and then KOs the fuck out of Alice. Uh, I guess Alice kind of had that one coming. She's not K'd out a few times, so she kind of had that one coming. It was a, it, it was a receipt. Uh, we see Alice handcuffed to a ceiling in a cell, and Kate is questioning her about her plans for the skin and who is this mouse. Uh, this will come into play later with the mouse thing. I was thinking that it was Mickey, you know, the Mickey Mouse, but ha ha wah wah. Alice tells Kate that the mouse found her after the crash. You know, Kate then calls Jacob and tells him that she is with Alice and that Alice is contained. Alice informs Kate she won't tell her, but she will show her where the mouse is. Oh, this isn't a trap or anything. And I mean, at this point, the action sequence was ridiculous. Um, the writing is just bad. The dialogue and delivery has just been cringy on Ruby Rose's part. Because it's it's just so drab and basic and dull and there's nothing. It's just a listless delivery. Uh, whereas Rachel Scarston is at least, you know, I'm buying what she's selling as Alice. I, I like the character of Alice. I really do. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, Rachel does the best with what she's given with this, this poorly written show overall. But they've had, for five episodes, I think they've had what, like five different, uh, four or five different writers or something five different directors on so uh, the episodes seem a bit disjointed at times um, so Alice and or should I say Beth and Kate are on their journey 
to find the mouse, uh, maybe Danger Mouse. So they're in a car. Alice tells Kate that Catherine Hamilton fanged her death by using deer bones. That's the bones they found at the Miller farm. If you remember, I don't know if you do, uh, we discussed this, and I believe it was the last episode, about, you know, the Miller Farms connection, so, and then Jacob had a funeral for Bambi, kind of jokes about it. Alice continually rambles, and she tells Kate why she's like this, you know, she goes back to a flashback when she wakes up with the man and his son who claim they found her in the river while they were fishing, she asks to call the police and he says they're on their way you know obviously they never show up he keeps her there you know kind of a, almost a stockholm syndrome kind of thing uh, sophie and jacob are discussing what to do about kate and alice and they just decide to handle it with the two of them and my immediate thought was oh yeah this can't miss uh, you know jacob seems to be you know he's he's obviously a powerful man but which just means he will take a harder fall, probably. Uh, Catherine and Mary Hamilton, we cut to them. Mary says she doesn't know how they mistook deer bones for human bones, and Catherine comes clean and tells her it was intentional. She was behind the entire ruse. It was me. It was me the whole time. Right, let's see. You know, jinkies. Let's see who's under the mask. Here it's Catherine Hamilton. She <laughs> told her new husband that his daughter was dead. <laughs> Who writes this? Like, is this is this real? Uh, she did it because she wanted to give Kate and Jacob closure, but I don't think this is the whole story. There's probably more to this that we'll find out. Mary is distraught over it and walks away. Alice and Kate are at this roadside diner filled with bikers. Alice rambles, you know, doing her normal Alice routine. Kate spews meaningless dialogue that's just poorly delivered by Ruby. Alice and the boy. They, okay, so they cut away to Alice and the boy. Uh, in a flashback, they're playing. She sees the news. And there's a report that says they're still searching for Beth. Uh, the, the guy, you know, the captor enters. When she says she wants them to call the police, he throws her in a basement room. And she looks over in the corner of the sink, and there's just a face floating in it. Uh, hello, Clarice. You know, back at Wayne Enterprises, Mary is frantically screaming at security. She's drunk, meets up with Luke Fox, finally uh, crying, and tells Luke she needs to talk to Kate because the cover up about Beth, blah, blah, blah. They have their own little scene there. Jacob and Sophie in their vehicle. This is bad CGI green screen. I didn't mention this earlier with Alice and Kate, but yeah, it's just bad CGI green screen. Uh, Sophie tells Jacob that. Catherine engineered the whole cover-up and regarding the disappearance of Beth. Alice is eating and Kate's trying to get her to talk about her captivity. They flash back to the guy making her a sand, you know, the, the little mouse eating her sandwich, the creepy guy telling her sociali socialization is as important as food and water and shelter. But apparently he can't remember to remove the dismembered face from his basement sink. He tells her the face is an experiment, it's for his son, and that Beth is home and she should get used to it here. Uh, Alice tells Kate that the mouse was the guy's son and he needed the face for his experiments to try to fix it because he's become an outcast, this disfigurement he has. And he can imitate voices, which he comes into play later on, like down to like a T. Uh, somehow Alice found a way to get Kate drugged because the bunny rabbit gang shows up and they have a shootout. Uh, you know, Dodgson is taken down. Jacob beats the shit out of him. Uh, you know, Kate, Alice gets away with uh <laughs> alice gets away with kate uh mary's drunk and she cries luke about kate and beth and how she's not a good sister um i don't know if they're gonna put these two in a relationship but alice says kate chained to a wall in a basement in the mouse house and she engineered her kidnapping so they can get kate out of the way and you know they can carry out their her and this guy can carry out their plan Johnny. Alice tells Kate she'll eventually, how she eventually escaped from the room in the basement by picking the lock with a rusty nail. She called her dad and her captor catches her and tells him everyone to come looking for her. He'll kill him. It'll be her fault. Jacob shows up the house forces his way and of course the dad tells him that it was the son imitating a voice. Blah blah blah. Uh, you know, there's a scene where Kate and Beth are on opposite sides of the same door. You know, Kate cries out to her. Beth doesn't say anything. Uh, Jacob and Sophie bad green screen driving he and it just comes to jacob all of a sudden he knows where they're going uh luke and mary are still together at wayne and you just know that mary's gonna figure out where uh bat women and bat woman is they find out that johnny the guy's son broke out of arkham 
and uh, Jacob and Sophie arrive at the face dealer's house they have this big standoff there uh, you know uh, Kate has a nail in her boot she gets herself out Alice and Jacob have this dialogue back and forth and it's just bad uh, she stabs him there's a you know a standoff with Sophie and Kate and Jacob and Alice and the guy they they let them leave of course because Jacob's bleeding out you know Luke and Mary at Wayne Mary's leaving you know you don't really get too much there it's just uh, they show her and Johnny talking uh, afterwards um, <laughs> oh yeah and it's she just calls them dear brother and she can't <laughs> It's weird, uh, but you know they had a, a flashback to where she sl he slid her Alice in Wonderland under the door, and they have this exchange back and forth in Alice in Wonderland dialogue. So, yeah, I can't wait to. Uh, <clears throat> she gives him the skin to fix his face. That's what the skin was for. So, thanks for watching. Um, I, I didn't. This episode was bad. These are just getting worse. But I'm gonna keep reviewing them for you guys. Uh, God, Sophie could have shot Alice in this, and just didn't i don't know it just it was bad um uh, yeah just follow us on uh, you can follow us on facebook twitter instagram you know obviously the youtube channel uh spotify anchor itunes podbean there's podcast uh past podcast episodes up for you to listen to we have a deep back catalog uh wednesday night tomorrow night starts the boardroom first episode is right here on the place to be reviews you can check that out also, I am looking forward to that. Uh, be myself, Cody from Goober Brothers Entertainment, Groovinator from Raiders of the Lost Flicks, and Salvador, the Don of Two Cents Toys. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to bitch slap that like button on the way out. I'm Etep and of the Place to Be Reviews. And if I don't see you, remember, have yourselves a great day. And of course, a pleasant tomorrow. Batwoman's horrible.